Hello everyone and welcome back to the Oxford Vapors YouTube channel. I'm Taylor and today we're going to be looking through my picks of the top five vape mods of all time. Now, these are not in any particular order. They are just my picks of the hundreds and hundreds of vape devices that I've had over the years I've been vaping. These are my favorites. Specifically, these are all dual 18650 battery devices. I'll probably do other lists of other types, internals and single batteries and everything, but this one is solely dual 18650. I do have a favorite out of these and I'll tell you which one it is when we get there. First up, we have the Aspire Arcon. Now this was released in about 2016 roughly and when it came out in the vaping community it was a massive hit. Now this isn't the sort of device that's all bells and whistles, you know, all singing, all dancing. It is relatively basic in terms of external features. Internally it was absolutely fantastic. This came out at the height of the, you know, when everyone was using rebuildables and, you know, trying to get the best, build the best coils and everything like that. And the features that this offered at the time were absolutely bang on. It had a 150 watt max, which may not sound that much compared to others, but it was a true 150 watts. It would run that high. But the main feature of this was what the chip did. So this would offer all the usual things, you know, variable wattage, variable temperature, um, a bypass mode. And then it had um, curves, which are basically pre-programmable wattages at time increments. So you could say, you know, to get a good ramp up on your coils, you could run, you know, 100 watts for the first second and then drop it down to 50. And it would let you create these yourself. This was a real big plus for the people who were trying to get the best out of their RDAs or RTAs. This was available in three colours, uh, grey, black and blue. And to be honest, if this mod came out now, it would be quite boring in terms of look, but it would definitely still hold up. Next up, we have the Inakin Proton. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer, this is the original Proton that came with the original Plex tank. I never had the Plex tank, I just bought it mod only, but this is my favorite dual battery device ever. It's gonna be hard to justify why, I don't really, you know, it's, it's not really the best at anything, but it just does everything well. I really, really enjoyed it when I had it. It's a 235 watt max, so a massive top end that I don't think anyone ever really gets to, but it's there if you do want it. It came with a full color screen, which when this came out wasn't uncommon, but it wasn't as common as it is now. It used a joystick control rather than traditional up and down buttons. It would, you would, shift the joystick left or right and then you could click it in to select things so it was a bit different in that sense it had a side fire similar to something like the smock alien and if you had a smock alien back then the proton would be very familiar to you because the design of it was similar third on this list is a mod that only came out a month and a half ago as at the time of filming and that is the vapor so target 200 Now I believe this came top of my list for top vape mods of 2022 and that's why it gets onto this list. It is a fantastic dual battery device. It has 220 watt maximum output and the best feature in my opinion which is the pulse mode which for those of you who haven't seen any previous videos that I had this device in, what pulse mode does is it fires the device every 0.2 of a second. Another plus of this device is it's actually quite small for a dual battery mod. It's amazing to me that they've managed to fit the chipset with such a good feature as the pulse feature in such a small amount of space because the actual mod itself isn't much bigger than the batteries themselves. Now, the colors it came in weren't great. They were slightly different each one, but largely they looked the same. The difference was the weave of the braiding which is on the outside but the reason that they look quite samey is because that braiding is water resistant. So in order to be water resistant it needs to be a particular weave and therefore it can't be too different in terms of the colour. Unlike anything else on this list, mainly because of the age of the other ones, this device has a Type-C charging port. Obviously it's called a charging port, I still wouldn't recommend you charge through it. I would say charge your batteries externally always but it does have a 0.9 inch full color screen. Now fourth on this list is a bit of a curveball. 
It's the Asbake Michael. Now, as I run through the stats of this device, you're probably going to be thinking, well, why is it on the top of all time list, in my opinion? Because there's a lot of downsides to this, uh, chief among which is the cost. Um, when this came out, which was about 2018-ish, it was £90 mod only, which was very expensive. It was the most expensive device that was on sale in Oxford Vapors at the time. I bought one personally because I'm a sucker, and when you see it, you'll understand why. But that was a, a big downside, and the reason that it probably didn't sell very well. Uh, the other main downside to this, before I get onto the good bits, was it's, well, it's massive. <laughs> it's about 20% bigger than something like a Smock Alien, which isn't small in and of itself. It was bulky. It would fit up to a 30 millimeter tank on the top. Yes, with a little bit of overhang, but considering that probably 95% of devices these days are designed for a 24 mil, that gives you an idea of how much bigger this device was. On the good side, the chip inside, which was called a VO chip, was absolutely fantastic for a lot of the same reasons that the Archon is on this list. It gave you a lot of versatility, it was a very very good chipset. It was, that well as Vape themselves compared it to the DNA chip, which is obviously the chief among chips in the vaping world. I would say it's not quite that good, don't get me wrong, it was a fantastic chipset. It gave you a lot of options, it ran really really well. It was a 200 watt maximum output. Again, like the Archon, doesn't sound too high, but it would consistently run at that wattage. And the only little other annoying thing with it is the battery door, which unlike most isn't hinged or magnetic, it is just held on by a slide. As I said, there's no hinge though, so when you take it out, it falls out. If you didn't hold this correctly, the batteries would fall out, but obviously when you're using it day to day, once you're used to how it works, it's easy to avoid doing that. But in my opinion, the main upside to this is the absolutely incredible way that this device looks. It is nothing short of beautiful. Now it was done by, I believe, a Japanese artist, but Asvek never gave credit to who it was, so I, I can't tell you who done them. Basically there's two types, you have Devil's Knight, which is, it says Devil's Knight, it, I've always called it the vampire one, it looks very much vampire-y and gothic and stuff like that. The other one is called Walking Dead, which, as the name suggests, is zombies. We haven't really seen anything like this in the vaping world when this came out. It's just amazing. It looks amazing. It is the best looking vape device that's ever been released, in my opinion. And for both of them to look as good as that is, is fantastic. I think it's amazing. Really, really good. I can't speak highly enough of it. And the actual feel in the hand, it, it felt rigid. It was sturdy. I believe, from memory, that underneath the imagery itself, it was actually carbon fiber. So it was a solid mod. A mixture of the chip and the way it looked is the reason that it is on this list. It is still probably in my top three, let alone my top five. And finally, a bit of a controversial inclusion, the Smock Alien. Now, the reason that this is on the list, even though it's probably not in the top five best of vape devices ever, is because it was my first dual 18650 device. And had I not bought it and progressed in terms of how I vaped in that way, I probably wouldn't be sat here doing this now. This was before I worked for a vaping company. This was while I was just merely a customer. And I got recommended this device, bought it, loved it, used it for ages until it died, and I've still got it now even though it doesn't work. It was a 220 watt maximum output, and side fire, like I said earlier, like the Proton, it was the same sort of layout. And a big plus to this, that if you looked hard enough, you would be able to find whatever colour you wanted of this device. There were so many. I'll put them on screen now, and I don't expect you to be able to see all of them, because there are hundreds of them. <laughs> but yeah, it gave you that, you know, variation of there was one for everyone if you looked hard enough. There were, you know, there was pearlescent ones and black ones and camo ones and all these different, all these different designs. So it appealed to a big amount of people, hence why it's probably one of the best-selling devices of all time. 
it still had good features, you know, it had the standard sort of smock, you still had your volt, um, variable wattage, voltage, temperature, all this sort of thing. It, it offered much of what every vape device does. My only downside with it is it wasn't particularly reliable. It would go wrong quite a lot. We had a few back when they were on sale and they didn't seem to last that long for other people. Mine lasted quite well and so did someone else in the companies. I think his is still working now, but they seem to be a little bit unreliable. Whether it's because they were not that hardy when dropped or whether they just weren't built very well, I don't know. I'm not saying either way, smock don't sue me. But as I say, one of the top sellers of all time and that's why it's on this list. So those were my picks for the top five vape devices of all time. What did you think of my picks? I'm sure that a lot of you will disagree with me and that's fine. Let me know in the comments what would be your pick for the best of all time. But whether you agree or disagree, please feel free to leave a like, comment and subscribe to this channel. And with that said, I've been Taylor, this is Oxford Vapors, and we'll see you very soon.